Welcome everybody to the first tutorial of a series that I'm making about Titopia. Titopia is a web-based render engine, which means you don't really need a high-end render machine anymore. It's a GPU-based render engine and has most of the features that you're already familiar with and it even has a node-based material system. Let me show you how to get started with Titopia as an industrial designer. We're gonna put in a product into our scene. We're gonna add some materials, add some lighting and get to know some of the unique features of Titopia. You can download the 3D model that I'm gonna use on my website. The link is in the description down below. I hope you're as excited as I am to try this new render engine. So let's get started. So when you, when you start a new scene, you will always be presented by this default object and you can either hide or delete it. But uh, for now, let's keep it because we need it for size references. So for the first step, let's go down here into import. And this is where you can find all your imported 3D models. You can either click here to import the 3D model or even drag and drop it. So this is the 3D model that you can download. And either you can drag and drop it or just click once and it will import the model into the scene. Now let's see if the headphones are in the correct size. And I think they are. They're a little bit smaller than this chair here. And I think the dimensions will be correct. Now I can get rid of my default chair object. We could move the headphones down manually to the floor of our scene, but also here there's a handy little button which then snaps the object to the ground. What we also can see is our light group here with the default three-point lighting setup. We might gonna change that later on, but for now we can keep it as is. And if I want to go back into full view of my object, can click here, aim, view at selected objects, or just hit F. All right, now let's apply some materials. So let's go into the plastic materials and then scroll down. I'm going to choose an acrylic opaque material and I'm gonna drag and drop that onto my model. And I just want to add it to this headband here. So I'm gonna hit Alt, separate it by part. So I'm just drop it here. And you can see it applies a generic UV layout here, which is really handy. And now we can zoom in and see our roughness here. So the first thing is I'm gonna change the size of that bump map. So to go into the material, we can either go here uh, to the material list and then highlight the specific material, or we can just double click while holding control. And that also brings us into the correct material. So this plastic material is using the material graph. So what I'm gonna do is just hit the material graph editor. And here we have our material graph editor window. So let's move that so we can see both the material and the window. So here in the graph editor, you have a huge arrangement of different smart textures and materials as well as adjustments. But what we just need to do right now is just to resize the rough noise. So double click here on the rough noise and change the grain size. So what we can do is just hover over the grain size and then click and drag to the left in order to increase or decrease the value and um, everything else I'll keep as is. So this is our rough plastic material. And what we can do now is we're gonna drag and drop this to the according parts. So just highlight it here. And then with holding Alt, you can select the part that the material is gonna be applied onto. So this is the first material applied and the next is gonna be our leather parts. So let's go down in the materials to cloth and leather and then scroll down and we're gonna choose this white leather here. And as before, drag and drop that and then hold Alt and that drags it or drops it onto the specific part. So now this leather is a little bit too warm so let's just change that the diffuse map i'm gonna change the texture and um, just desaturate it completely all the way to the left and that makes it just a white uh, leather and what we also can do is just change the brightness a little bit darker and that creates a gray uh, leather and the last thing is that the texture again is a little bit too big you can see the grain of the leather is just too rough and since this material is not using the material graph, we can go down here on the UV transform and then scale the texture. So I'm gonna just click and drag that to the right in order to increase the UV scaling. Let's go with five. 
And of course, we also want this applied to the other parts. So let's again drag and drop that onto the different elements while holding Alt, drag that onto the parts. All right, now for the inside mesh here, we're gonna choose this fabric dark gray. I'm gonna drag and drop that again holding while holding Alt and it just applies it to the inside part here. Now again, we need to resize that. I'm gonna go UV scaling again and I'm just gonna increase the scaling here. All right, now since we are going to apply a label, let's change the material to use the material graph and that allows us to have different layers of materials. So let's quickly change the color of the, of the texture. And I'm gonna go down here to the saturation, again, decrease that to zero, and then also the value, which is the darkness or the brightness. And I'm gonna decrease that as well a little bit. All right, now let's add a new material layer. And we can change that to the diffuse material let's give it a texture for the opacity. So click here on the texture image icon and then select the LPNG file that comes with the model. So I'll just click on that texture uh, icon and then I'm going to change the mapping from box to plane. And then also we're gonna change it from repeat to none, which means it's only appearing one time. The next step is to rotate the texture. So go here to the move texture icon and then I'm gonna rotate that uh, inwards and then also 90 degrees to the left. And that should be correct. All right, now the L is completely opaque and the rest is transparent and shows the material underneath. But what I want to do is also make the L a little bit transparent so it looks like it's printed onto the material itself. So let's jump into the material graph and work from there. So here you can see our two materials, our universal material, which is the fabric, and then also our diffuse material that's connected to our second layer, and the L PNG that creates our opacity. Let's zoom into here. What I want to add is basically a color ramp, and uh, this is the grayscale remap, and that basically translates our full range from black to white that we have in our PNG into a different output. So let's connect those nodes and just move the brightness point over to the left until we see it kind of slowly disappearing. All right, I think this works well. Now we need to do that on the other side as well. So you can copy the material over to the other side. I just hold control and click on it and then right click to copy the material. And that allows us to basically drop the material onto another part. And now I'll just turn around and again, while holding Alt, I'm gonna drop that material onto this new part and then select done. And now since we need a different label, the right side label, what I'm gonna do is right click and unlink the material and it allows us to replace our opacity texture. So let's jump into the material graph here again. We are gonna click on the label and we place the texture to the right side and click done and again, we're gonna have to rotate that 180 degrees in order to have it the right side up. Now we need to just replace the PNG itself or the texture itself. So I'm gonna go here into the texture, click once and upload the other one. All right, that's it for the other side. So we have the left side and the right side. And the last material that we want is a metal material. So I'm gonna just go here into our metals and I'm gonna choose a rough metal here and I'm gonna drag and drop that to the remaining materials. Now I don't need to hold shift because I want to apply it to all of the rest of the, of the parts and that basically just replaces the standard material now with the metal. So the metal here doesn't have a lot to reflect yet, but we're gonna change it in a minute. But for now, we want to use the material graph also on our metal material because we want to add another label. So click here to use the material graph and then we're gonna add a new material layer. So this new layer can stay a universal material. What we can also do is rename the material layers accordingly. So our first one is gonna be the metal layer and then the second one is gonna be our label. And as before, we're gonna go down into opacity and then upload our 
on off icon here. Next, we're gonna change the repetition again to none and the mapping to plain. And that allows us to place the texture onto the side. So we're gonna click here onto the side and place it right around the center. We're gonna rotate that 90 degrees. With one of those blue handles, we're gonna just scale that down to around here. All right, and click done. And now since it's not repeating, we only have it on the right side. And since this is a universal material, it allows us to also add emission. So let's go down here to emission color and select a color that we like. Just go with blue and then increase, slowly increase the emission, emission strength until we have something that looks right. Now we have a nicely glowing on off icon here on the side. So the third step now is to add lighting and an environment. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add a light stage. So here in the scene, we have our light group, we have our camera, we have our model, and now we're going to add another piece. And Titopia comes with a lot of models that you can load into your scene. So we'll go here to model and then scroll down to basic geometry. And here we can find some of these light stages. So I'm going to go with the L and just click once in order to load that in. I'm going to keep the size because it's just in the background. Um, what we can do is just move it a little bit to the front in order to have this uh, gradient here a little bit stronger, closer to the camera. And also what I'm going to do is go into our environment and then deselect the ground shadow. I'm going to just have the shadow on the light stage. Now, in order for us to find a good lighting setup, what I'm going to do is add a new environment. That's going to be a basic environment that only has a gradient in the background. So let's go to the HDR editor and then go to color gradient. And we're going to change that gradient to be a little bit darker, a mid gray to a black. So this is now our environment with no additional HDRI lights. And we're going to just light the scene with those overhead panels. So if we hide the light group, you can see it's a very dim setup. And if we unhide that again, we have our lighting back. So what we can do now is go to our lighting presets and then find a preset that we like. In order to see what we're doing, go ahead and click our headphone model and then aim the view again onto that object. I'm gonna hide the light group and now in our lighting presets, we can now click them and then see which ones resonate with us. So I really like this one, number 30, light overhead cold. That gives me a bit more bluish tint onto the whole image and works, I think, really well with our metals and high tech product here. So I'm gonna hit apply and that applies the light preset onto the scene. We always can see in the outline our lighting presets and also our previous light group, which is hidden. And if we don't need that, we can always delete that. Or we can always go back to our previous lighting setup that we had. All right, and for the final preparation, before we're gonna hit the render button, we're gonna add a camera. So let's add a new camera from our scene. And down here, we can always change the aspect ratio. Let's go with one to one. And then we're gonna move the camera to a position that we liked. And I really love that gradient that this light stage gives us. And also what I'm gonna do is go back to our outliner and then move the whole model up a bit in order to make it float. And we also tilt it a little bit to the back. So it has a little bit more dynamic look to it. So now if I'm happy with my camera placement, the one thing that I can always add is depth of field. So let's just activate that. And then we need to pick a focal point, which is gonna be our foreground, hit done. And then we can always play with the F stop, stop in order to increase or decrease the bokeh effect in the background. All right, now we are ready to render. So we're gonna go up here on to render and then gonna select a file name, select the camera, which is already selected, and then change the resolution to whatever resolution you'd like. And if you'd like, you can also add some render passes such as object ID or material ID. And if you're fine with waiting, you can always hit instant render, or you can add it to the render queue and then keep on working while the render queue is working in the background. All right, while the render is working in the background, 
I can show you a little tip or a cool feature that Titopia has, which can really add value to your renders. So what I'm going to do is go to our models that we can add into our scene. And then down here in nature, we can look for the rocks. And this is a quite expensive list of different 3D scanned rock textures. And what I can do is just find a 3D scan that I like. Let's add this sand beach stone here. I'm gonna move that down a bit and I'm also going to hide the light stage. So let's move that to fit our model, maybe right around here. And then I'm gonna add a new camera to a cool spot in the scene. And of course, we also need to change our lighting setup. So let's hide our light setup. We're only going to light it with the environment and then go to environment and find a new outdoor HDRI. And when you add a new environment, remember to turn off the ground shadows uh, to avoid the clipping. Now we can place our camera or jump back into the camera and play with our depth of field. So let's pick this focal point here again. And you can see it's already quite cool looking with uh, all these hard shadows, the blue in the background and these 3D scanned rocks in the foreground. What I can do also is to play with the rotation or to change where the light is coming from. All right, now I'm quite happy with the setup. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock the camera that I have and also the other one that we made before. And then if I now turn, it will actually jump back into our free roam camera. If these wireframes or previews of the cameras and lights are in the way, you can always turn them on and off here with the light and camera wireframe button. All right, let's jump back into camera three and we'll do a render. So as always, thanks so much for watching. If you found this tutorial useful, then leave a comment down below and like this video and follow the channel for more industrial design videos. See you next time.